Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Welcome to Friday Night on Talk TV. I'm Mike Graham and this is, of course, Plank of the Week. It seems only a few days ago that we did Plank of the Year because it is only a few days ago that we did Plank of the Year and we're back with more planks. Some of them are the same as last year, but don't let that put you off. Uh, we've got a great, great panel tonight. We've got Renee Hundekamp, the doctor. Uh, we've got Kevin O'Sullivan, the TV critic. We've got Alex Phillips, uh, the politician. And uh, we've got Stephen Allen, the comedian. So we've got everybody you could possibly need uh, to make a show. And that's what they're fighting for. It is, of course, The Plank. And we're going to kick straight off with Dr. Renee. OK, so I've got to win with this. You, you probably this. will. You know that. OK, so I am nom nominating a guy you may not have heard of before, but let <laughs> me tell you why. His name is Sadiq. Sadiq Khan. Khan. Yay! Yay! Let's all go home. We just lost. We just narrowly, lost. He just narrowly missed out getting well, played of the year. But now lost he out is, to the BBC. But now he is El Presidente, really, yes. isn't he? Because oh, he, yeah. he bought us with our own money. The, the mayor's Thank fireworks you. for yes. London. So thanks very much for doing that for us. He actually ruined it with the wokest of oh. lectures to us that covered Windrush, the NHS, yeah. LGBTQ, whatever it is, all the Diversity. way down to Z. Diversity. And then said that London is for everyone. But that's a lie, right. isn't it? Because London is for everyone apart from women, Right. Children under 16. Here it is. And this was brought to you like he was the big impresario, wasn't he? It was like brought to you by Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London. Yeah. It wasn't brought to you by him. It's brought to you London by presents. us. Presents. Yeah. The mayor of London presents. Yeah. What are you? I mean, like? what's he going to do next Saturday night mayor in London, London Palladium? London presents as a binary yeah. male. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lon London is a place for everyone not to be safe in. Thanks. Yeah. Sadiq. Absolutely yeah. right. And the final nail in this coffin, I think, was demanding that people had photo ID. Because the last time he was asked about photo ID, it was for voting. Oh, yeah. And he said that was outrageous. <laughs> it was discriminatory. Because it meant it was discriminatory against his voters, of course. Yes. But now for this, with our money, we had to produce photo ID. Mm. The man is an absolute idiot. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to really say. Is. He thinks he's actually so much bigger than he actually is, because yeah. he's very small. Well, he has small man syndrome, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. exactly. I mean, he thinks that obviously he has to act bigger because he's so small. And he has to be. Plank of the week, guys, I'm sorry. Well, he does. Um, luckily, the Conservative Party, and I haven't seen this yet, so I'm going to say have made something funny around Sadiq Khan, but you know politicians and funny doesn't really work. But let's have a look. This is the, this is the Conservative version uh, of Sadiq Khan's New Year's Eve fireworks display. <laughs> Sadiq Khan. I mean, the, the thing about Sadiq Khan is that nobody can quite understand how he keeps getting re-elected. Well, because because the, you very rarely meet anybody that says, you know, the thing about London is it's got a great mayor, Sadiq <laughs> Khan, brilliant guy, you know, he does everything right, uh, he helps everybody uh, who needs help. Yeah. He, he's really made London a, a total kind of, you know, draw for tourists from around the world. Nobody says that, no, ever. The thing about London is that it, that people think, oh, it's full of multi-millionaires, rich foreigners, or Knightsbridge, Mayfair. The majority of people in London are poor. Yeah. yeah. They don't have much money. And London is not a great place no. to be if you don't have much money. Right. And that is Sada Sadiq Khan's fan base, and they all vote for him yeah. because uh, he just appeals to them. You know, if you're rich, uh, Jewish, anything like that, uh, Sadiq Khan doesn't want to know. That whole firework display mm. was about appealing yeah. to his fan base, the people who might vote for them, and we paid for it. That is an outrage. Right. And apparently there was a lot of problems with people who had actually bought tickets. Couldn't get in. Because you buy tickets apparently all over Europe you can buy them. Yeah. And lots of them, there were lots of fake tickets yeah. going on. So they didn't even really handle that terribly well. But, but why can't we just have a fireworks celebration yeah. to bring in the new year and not be lectured right. to? Yeah. yeah, and according to Sadiq Khan and his firework display, there are basically three great things about Britain. Only yeah. three. Yeah. Diversity. Yeah. Uh, the NHS. Right. Uh, poor old Sadiq. Yeah. He still thinks we're standing around banging pots yeah, and yeah. pans for our useless health service. <laughs> uh, and uh, the other thing that uh, he banged on about in this was, I can't even remember. It was Windrush. Windrush. windrush yeah, because we would have been windrush. without Windrush. LGBTQXYZ Steve, plus five. talk to me. I mean, without Windrush, we'd be nowhere, would we? In this yeah. country, <laughs> would be absolutely hopeless. Like, I think the reason you don't hear a lot of people uh, vocalising their support for Sadiq Khan is those people are still trapped in a uh, low traffic neighbourhood <laughs> behind some plant pots. Yeah. <laughs> I once took took the wrong left and that's it. You're in there for about half an hour. I think might as well just cry. Right. Uh, you can't call an ambulance because they can't get down there either. No. Um, but it's, I, just, I think it's interesting that he 
presented all of that fireworks display. He clearly didn't pay for it, so it must mean he invented fireworks. That's yeah. Bad news for the Chinese. And he's also now invented fireworks that don't harm uh, in any way, shape or form the environment. environment. Because yeah. they're all no drones. Yeah, they're they're all those. like, you know, they're lights instead. You know, surely it must be bad for the environment well, So the Chinese manufacturing all of these drones, yeah. drones by, you know, using children in African mines mm. to get yes. their rare earth minerals doesn't harm the environment, but it'll whiz bang. Yeah. Well, you know, climate change. So yeah. the Chinese are big on fireworks as well. They probably made them. Yeah, so come on, car. we invented that with yeah. Guy Fawkes. We did. I'll tell you what you, you didn't see illuminated in the British. sky was uh, ULEZ, uh, yeah. the expansion <laughs> scheme. Uh, and have you seen the guards? So, you know, people keep vandalising yeah. ULEZ cameras. Have you seen the guards that the <laughs> mayor of London, that this city has hired to yeah. protect the cameras? Oh, yeah. They wear these horror masks. They've got those, uh, hor those uh, skull masks. Right. And, you know, and they carry these sort of truncheons and everything. I mean, oh, yeah, it's, mad. it's a militia. It's, mad. it's a militia. It is a militia. We'll come back to that because Kevin O'Sullivan has got his next nomination to come. But before we show that, uh, we want to show Kevin uh, bravely fighting uh, <laughs> against the elements this week um, when he tried to go outside the building, uh, which was apparently a very dangerous thing to do. This was, what was the name of Storm? Storm uh, Hank. Storm, Storm Hank. Kevin versus Storm Hank. Here you go. You said Kevin O'Sullivan versus Storm Hank. <laughs> I'd say that's a an absolute victory for Storm it Hank. Is. It <laughs> is. Oh, no, darling, it, this is a victory for Darwinianism. This is why you need to eat a rump steak from time to yeah. time. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Darwinian. Yeah, I actually might not surprise you, no, it didn't blow me over, but you know. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And it didn't blow me over because it just went hard. Now, Kevin, you've got ITV. Come I on. I certainly have. Yeah. Uh, well, that uh, firework display by uh, Sadiq Khan uh, was unfolding on the BBC over yes. New Year's Eve. Right. Meanwhile, over on ITV, you had the National Lottery Big Bash New Year show. Oh, great. Right? I missed that. And uh, I think we're going to look at some uh, footage of it. But yeah. it was a kind of hosing down, of a, a kind of woke torrent, a tsunami yeah. of wokery coming at us. <laughs> All the viewers are going, you know, it's New Year's Eve. Why am I looking at Idris Elba telling us about climate change? Why is, uh, uh, what's her name, Olivia Coleman on there going, we're going to save the planet, save yeah. the planet. You know, it was ridiculous. It's New Year's Glenn Eve. Host, Glenn Close, uh, Woody Harrelson, just this lineup of uh, virtue signaling Woody showbiz Harrelson. stuff. Yeah, Woody Harrelson, Harrelson where well, he's big on greenery. Oh, right. uh, just lecturing <laughs> the nation about. Uh, greenery and telling us we've got to save the planet and all, all over you looked at if you looked at um uh, at social media it's people mm. saying can't we have a night off yeah. it's new year's that, eve please, yeah, and absolutely. by the way itv don't forget this is the channel the what you know it's the, the wokest channel yeah. on earth it's almost work woker than the bbc and yeah. i can't say worse than that uh this is the channel that uh, uh fired our colleague piers morgan oh, yeah. for having the temerity to suggest that maybe just maybe <laughs> Meghan markle was not a uh, speaker of the absolute no, truth. No, no, maybe what everything she said was a load of old cobblers. But let's have a look at Idris Elba talking about the planet. Global warming, climate change, and the devastating loss of biodiversity are the greatest threats humanity has ever faced. We are in the midst of an ecological crisis. And it really doesn't matter how we apportion blame. The problems surrounding conservation seem overwhelming. Yeah. Didn't I mean, she what's it going to do her? with her? Didn't she put a child's rabbit in? She put in a rabbit and burned and and boiled why, it alive. Why don't they turn off one of those 500 spotlights, yeah. three giant lit up cubes, and the yeah. massive screen behind and just go, oh, do you right. know what? Better turn down the lecky. But Kevin's right. Why can't we just have Andy Stewart? Yeah, yeah. yeah like we used and, to, yeah. yeah. Happy Hogman E. You, you know, know so, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I mean, as people <laughs> said, that's supposed to be a, a celebratory New Year show for the nation to have fun watching. And what do you get? A bunch of lectures yeah. from showbiz stars who spend half their time in private jets. Right. The I, hypocrisy was palpable. But yeah. I guess whoever won the lottery that night could have joined them and bought their own private jet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. also, imagine how much electricity these people use. People yeah. like Idris Elba in his house, you know, Glenn Close, you think she lives in a little one-up, one-down, yeah, 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 bed-sit no, somewhere? No. no, I don't think so. I've heard Woody Allen now lives in a wigwam. Woody, Woody Allen. Allen. Woody, Woody, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Someone lives in Woody a Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Oh, Woody Allen's still got the... <laughs> I don't Australian think ITV would have Woody yeah. Allen on. No, 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 no that, that would never happen. Yes. No. Why have we got Woody Allen on? If he's not yes. stood for election, I don't know. He's not very woke, is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Woody Allen and his lovely wife. So on ITV, ITV <laughs> generally. Wife, daughter. Yeah. This was this was the essence of ITV. It, it, it used to be the Blackpool prom yeah. of uh, television it used entertainment to be funny. for the for the working class. Lots of fun, no wokery. Now look at it. I it's know. been ruined, and look at its audiences. They are going Plumacy. through the floor. Exactly, they are. Right. Now's your chance to redeem yourself All after right. that Woody uh, Allen. Wait, this, this, yeah, this is yeah, politics, so I'm fine. Okay, if it's pop culture, yeah, yeah. I'm done for. Right. No, the NHS. This is the I mean, NHS. You know, God bless the, them. The, the not so national God health service. Yeah. So you can go to the NHS if, well, I don't know. Who does get to go anymore? I seem to play telephone, telephone tombola just to get through to a receptionist. Um, no, the NHS have decided uh, with all of those extra funds that they've got, they're going to spend £4 million on giving gift vouchers to their staff because they've had a hard time. Really? What, really? because of COVID? Are they still going? Are you getting any of these? No, because they've had to they stand they outside one. in the cold holding placards, yeah. poor thing. Yeah. They probably caught a cold. Striking isn't but easy, you know. But you know, <laughs> it's even worse than that. I know that there are trusts in the NHS that are offering their staff to go into a raffle for one of three £500 gift vouchers if they have their COVID and flu vaccines. Oh, we oh love so they're now paying people to have their COVID and flu vaccine. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, what about Dr. Robert Lawrenson, who's that 29 year old guy? 29? He's nine. He's not 29. He's meant to be 29, right? He's always talking about how hard it is to be a junior doctor. Mm. He has a house that he bought, a flat that he bought, it's worth half a million quid. With no, no mortgage. mortgage. Uh, he's, a, he's a partner in his parents' consultancy company. You know, these people are an absolute joke. And the strike was began this week and will go until next week. And already the NHS is begging them to come back to work. Please tell me you've got some footage of him because the most remarkable thing mm. about this guy is what he looks like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, my, and my big question to him would be, uh, Dr. Lawrenson, what are you going to do after you leave school? Yeah. Well, you know <laughs> he's a trainee. He's honestly, he's got trainee the opposite GP. of Luke Lin Lin yeah. Lindler syndrome. But he's a, he's he's a, trainee, so he's a trainee GP, right? So can you imagine going to see this guy and asking him whether he can help you yeah, out? Yeah. And you kind of go... Are you still at school? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah you know? really ask you what's yeah, wrong with you. Well, Sonny... Uh... <laughs> you know, I, I saw him this morning saying that, you know, we're on £14 an hour and we actually just want £21 or £25 an hour. Right. Actually, as a trainee GP, if he's in year one, he's on at least £58,000. Yeah. If he's he? in year... Yes. If he's in... Sure. I, I put these online today, the, the pay scales. Yeah. Um, because you get a premium for going into a hard-to-fill yes. post, mm. i.e. GP. GP, right. So there is But it's no all lies. All of their propaganda is complete yeah. and utter nonsense. Yeah. They come out with... If you ask them how much they earn, they don't tell you. Yeah. They, they say fifteen pounds an hour, hour. and you go, "Well, how many hours are you working? You know, a million." Yeah. Well, then, please, don't you get like extra bundles if you decide yeah. to go and vaccinate people with a yes. flu jab and things like Only that? Only if you're you a can partner get some and you're running like, a business. Yeah, some edgy add-ons, can't you? But lots of people get they, get they get overtime money, they get London waiting, they yeah. get all sorts of things they don't tell you that they get. Pay premium. And this week there was also the story about the five million ghost patients that the GPs are somehow having on oh, the books, yeah. and they can't be difficult to treat. I mean, you know, ghosts. Well, they're, 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 not, they're not going to pull through. But no. they are because you've got to find them first. Yeah. They, yeah. You have to go. I said last night. You go, to, you go to your doctor. Let me check your heart, please. You go to your doctor's uh, and you say, uh, and you're a ghost patient. The doctor says, uh, So, what seems to be wrong with you? Well, basically, I'm dead. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, GPs. So it's 58 uh, grand a year. The right? NHS has been giving out some advice, though, as well this week, saying that if you're feeling a bit cold, you should try and stay warm. Yeah. And that oh, way yeah. you'll avoid having really? a stroke. Oh. And also you won't need to go to hospital. But do not turn your heating no. on because think of the environment. Mm. Yeah. But if you are also feeling a bit unwell, whatever you do, don't call the hospital because yeah. they won't be able to see you, because yeah. obviously they haven't got any doctors. It's unbelievable, isn't it? But they've got to go out and spend those vouchers at some stage. Yes. And now's a good time for mm. it, because the sales will be on. So but don't go them. out, you know, if it's a bit cold or no. windy or wet, because you might have an accident, yeah. and then you can't go into hospital either. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you uh, other patients who are about to become ghost patients. Those are patients in NH hos NHS hospitals who are dying yes. because yeah. the doctors are outside on a picket line. It's right. a, it's a Although, um, before filming this show, I walked past the hospital nearby, and guess what? There wasn't a picket line because they don't really usually hang around it's till the afternoon. Yeah. It's a bit late, you know. I mean, mornings only, and Start. then they're there for a couple of hours. And don't you find also most of the people on the picket line are not actually junior doctors at all? You know, they're either people who have left the business or they're sort of nurses or they're, you know, activists. But they're not actually junior doctors at all. And they are very jolly on the picket line. They seem very happy. Mm, they that don't look as if they're struggling. doctors and GPs, right? <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? Jolly. Steve, what have you got for us? I'm going to talk uh, chess. Yes. Um, Yen Cheng Long is an excellent Chinese chess player. Is he? He's, he's one of the best, won a tournament. Right. Apart from he had the prize removed, and not just the prize removed, mm. uh, because <laughs> there are two allegations. One is that he cheated by having remote control anal beads. Well, you 
question. Where do you get these remote control anal beads? I don't know why you're asking me. Yeah. I don't know why. Do I, I mean, I this is the look? reason I'm asking this. It's the second chess story in a year it is, where it? anal beads have been mentioned. Yes, and that's right. In theory, it's because you can kind of tell people how to play chess. I don't know if there's a code or it's like you put your hand near the wrong piece and <laughs> OK, I'll put the Can't they use some kind of different mechanism? Why well, don't it have to be anal beads? Chess is boring and maybe it just makes it a bit more fun. Right. It means re-watching that Netflix uh, Queen's Gambit takes yeah. a whole different... Absolutely, yeah. Um, but it's not. that's not why he had the prize removed. It's because of what he did afterwards. Right. He defecated in the hotel bathtub, Oy. which they said in the newspaper article, um, his celebrations ended with him defecating in a, in a bathtub. I think sometimes what footballers do is a bit showy. Yeah. But I've never seen one take it that far. <laughs> that really does seem a bit over the top. Have the beads, by the no, way. Was it, was it sort of like a. You know, who are those people who used to inspect feces on television? What? Uh, that was a doctor. I knew mean, he would know. She wasn't yeah. really a doctor, Gillian. Gillian would have cleaned your house. Maybe it was just like a giant German toilet to him, and he was going to prove that he didn't. But there was no one else there to prove it, too. I'm more upset that he did that in a bath and didn't clean the bath afterwards. In well, a hotel. He was, he was yeah, celebrating. Yeah. So <laughs> why did he... Why did he shit himself? Because he had too many <laughs> anal beads up his arse. Part I think he was trying to get them out. I presume he was trying... Let's have a look. Trying to get them out. <laughs> I, I, think we've got a, uh, I think we've got a clip. Let's have a look. What is this clip going to be? Rumors circulated online suggesting that Jan had cheated during the competition by using anal beads with wireless transmitters for signaling. Reports on the Chinese social site Weibo claimed that he had communicated information about the chessboard through rhythmic clenching and unclenching, sending signals to a computer that then provided instructions via vibrations. I mean, to be Is fair, that the voice of an anal I mean, bead, by the way? I, I, I <laughs> don't know. Send information there must by be clenching. easier ways of winning chess there championships, surely. I, I can't even send a text with one hand, let alone try and type no. one out that way. Did he just say that the website where this was revealed was called <laughs> Weebum? <laughs> Weibo, I think. Oh, uh, Weibo. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I got that wrong. Yeah, that's a very different website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And there probably is one called Weibo. Yeah, I'm going to look for it after dangerous. the show. <laughs> they look it dangerous. It doesn't look safe to me. No. <laughs> I mean, I remember being quite horrified by Papillon years ago <laughs> because they used to put things called charges up their backside where they kept their money yeah, when they were on yeah, Devil's yeah, Island yeah. and that kind of thing. Well, this puts on a whole new... Steve McQueen new. and Dustin Hoffman. Very, very much so. Yeah, too um, young, Alex. Okay, yeah. But what a terrible, terrible <laughs> thing. But also the most bizarre thing, that the second chess story in a year yeah. about chess champions doing... It's obviously, I think... So I it? wonder if anal beads are just big in China, and so it's a natural step <laughs> to just electrify them. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who would have come up with this. Really. Yeah, yeah. Checkmate. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. Not now! Knights of Bishop oh! 4, I said 4! <laughs> You idiots. That's what I call porn. You know. Anyway, coming up, um, it's going to be me. That's We're good. going to be talking about travel over the Christmas and New Year period, which was a bit of a nightmare for most people, but especially bad for a certain train company. This is Bank of the Week. Back with Chatting Away. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham and it is Friday night. This is the place where we do all the judging, so you basically don't have to. Uh, we've already had some pretty unusual nominations, I'd have to say. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the traditional route of having to go at a railway company. And this one has to be Eurostar. Now, I don't know if anybody tried to travel from, say, Pancras Station at any point oh, over yeah. the last sort of week or so. But it started badly before um, New Year when a lot of French Eurostar workers decided to go on strike. So suddenly there were no trains at all and nobody could get over to France or get here. Then they decided to um, shut it all down for a while and fix all the signals and make sure the signals would be brand new. Uh, and I think it was Christmas Eve or something like that when they unveiled the new signals and they didn't work. So unfortunately, <laughs> nobody could travel on that day either. Um, they then, of course, had the torrential rains and all that. And it turned out that one of the tunnels that goes underneath the Thames, which is slightly worrying, for me, if you're running, running by train, here it is, oh, uh, got flooded. They could have swum I've always, across. I've always worried about, you know, tunnels that go underwater. Like, what happens if they get flooded? And everyone goes, oh, that will never happen. Well, it did. Yeah. And there it is. And if you were in there while it got flooded, I think it would have been quite scary. So that meant that they couldn't run any trains either. So loads of thousands of people were basically trapped at King's Cross and Pancras for about three days. Couldn't go anywhere. Couldn't get to where they it was. They couldn't have issued people with canoes and let them just canoe across. Well, I mean, they could have said, why don't you get a coach to Dover? Um, but it was, I don't think the weather was too bad. But it was yes. another kind of, yeah. you know, we talked about, you know, Storm Hank or whatever it was. Yeah, Hank. Whenever it happens, whenever anything happens in this country, you just can't go anywhere, can you? 
Even when it doesn't happen, you can't go anywhere. That's true too. I mean, there's a big <laughs> train strike coming next week. I think the tube's on strike next week. So yeah, nobody will be able I'm, to get I'm it. Doing my show via oh. Zoom, by the way, Kev. You might as well just days. live across the road in the London Bridge Hotel because a, you can't get anywhere. A story of uh, when the strike was happening, because it's not just people getting stuck in St Pancras. Some people just couldn't get back. They'd <clears> been in France. Yeah. There was a lovely little vox box of this woman who was um, saying, oh, striking near Christmas, it's rude. And if you don't like rude, rude. behaviour, <laughs> yes. being in France is rude. probably the wrong place for you, isn't it? I think so, absolutely right. But, I mean, it seems incredible. They've also just this week been uh, given a going over by the Advertising Standards Authority because they were selling, in the summer, £39 tickets to, uh, to Paris, which they said there were about 40,000 of, but it turned out the there was nothing like 40,000. It was more like sort of 2,000. Four. Yeah. <laughs> and people who kept wanting to buy these £39 return tickets or single tickets were like, well, we can't get them, yeah. you know. So, I mean, it's a bad year for Eurostar, I would say. Do you know what? I asked you, someone you must have probably used it a lot. I lived on that yeah. thing. I lived on Eurostar and I loved it because as an MEP, your travel's all paid for. So you yeah. can get to go in the <laughs> fancy carriages. And well, paid so for by us, actually. Some, yeah. Well, yeah, sure. You, know. you go to St Pancras and there's a lovely cocktail bar. You can actually just ask the mixologist yeah. to make what you yeah. like. You get Trains scored, delayed madam, for three days. But you no don't problem. care. It's great. Tunnels full of water. Moment. Fantastic service. Yeah. Then you get on the train and it's like six o'clock in the morning. So blinking your eyes open like, oh, do I have to go to Brussels? And they're like, madame, champagne or orange juice? And you think, well, this is a no-brainer, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Champagne. Yeah. So, you know, in defence of Eurostar, mm. if you've got enough money or someone else is paying for you, it's really... Well, this is the great thing. Not really, because it doesn't matter how much money you've good. got. If it's not running, it's yeah. not much use to anyone, is it? Well, there's plenty of abandoned dinghies our side of the channel. Exactly, well. right. exactly. But this is the thing. I mean, so Eurostar, I mean, it's just failed, yeah, generally I mean, this speaking. This is not the first time. No. no all the time, fine. all the time. You on the, the payroll or something? All the time. <laughs> right. I lived on that. Mind you, maybe you had so much champagne, you just thought you were moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. There was a tunnel yeah. somewhere yeah. in the siding. Um, Renee, your next one. Okay, so I know it's my hobby horse, but the World Health Organization really has no concern for health anymore. I don't know what they are. I think you should rename it, shouldn't they? Well, it's not really the World Health it's Organization. It's not. It is really it? isn't. So this week, or just before Christmas, they announced a public consultation on their new trans guidance. Oh yeah. But they decided to make it really short, just three weeks over Christmas, uh -huh. which is really short for a public consultation. They've got a panel of 21 people. 14 of those people are absolute activists in transgender ideology. They all work for the World Health they, Organization. They, they don't work for the World Health Organization, but they certainly work for the organizations which want our children to be put on that pathway yeah. as quickly as possible with drugs and surgery and get them where they want them to be. So this is a completely biased um, public consultation and they're, they're not even consulting for very long. The right. guidance is going to be published in February. And it's just for the whole world they're doing It's this. for the whole world. Hopefully, It's quite ambitious like, though, isn't it? It is. So countries like us and Sweden who are now using evidence-based medicine will probably ignore right. it. But for countries that aren't, they'll probably say, oh, yes, please, and more children are going to be harmed, mm. more children are going to be damaged, and it's just another organisation to which we give but lots I'm, of money. I'm thinking about kind of how is this being seen by other countries. I know that, you know, here in the West, we're all very woke about all this stuff. Yeah. But what if you're, and I'm not singling out Azerbaijan particularly, but what if you're in Azerbaijan and you get this guidance? Or what if you're in Saudi Arabia and you get this guidance? I don't think they're going to follow it, are they? Well, no. Interesting you say that, because actually what you would find if you go around yes. some of the most hardline countries of the world is where it's not There's acceptable to be surgery. gay, right. most uh, <coughs> gay men are forced to have sex changes. But what I do think is this is are a very innovative, yeah, yeah. it's, it's a happen. very innovative way of controlling the global population, isn't it? Because that's what they're very worried mm. about, the fact that the global population is booming and man-made climate change and the impact it on the earth. Booming. So what's the great but way to stop people told having we've children? Got, we've got yeah, falling birth rate, It's though. not booming. The biggest problem we have is underpopulation as a world. We really do. But, you know, I'm sick and tired of this. Maybe Trump had the right idea when he defunded the WHO. I think he did. Well, yeah. the WHO is a complete utter waste of time. <laughs> Chinese health organisation. Yeah. That's who? what it is. Hey? The who? You've gone there. You are. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's 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 I don't think we should be criticising <laughs> the World Health Organisation <laughs> because, because uh, it kept us safe throughout the COVID <laughs> crisis. <It did>. <laughs> <laughs> Useless organisation. These were the people who said that the, the, the COVID useless. would not jump species, yeah, right? Yeah. That it was and did not come only, out of China. And it was confined only to bats. They went into China and had a look and said, no, definitely didn't come from here. No. 
absolutely useless. Absolutely. Yeah, so have we got this? Has it been written down then, this yes. trans guidance? Well, no, the, the guidance will come out in February, but, no. but we know what it's going to be because no. we know who's on the panel. No. And we know how short the public consultation is. What so a waste a, of money. It's a waste of money, and it's another organisation captured by this nonsense. Uh, by do, the we, do we, as Britain, uh, like other countries, do we have to sort of send them millions of... Probably. Yeah, every yeah year, probably. Yeah. 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 Even though we haven't got any. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the government, Kevin. You've got um, Mr James I've Cleverly. got James Cleverly, yes. uh, who, um, you know, sometimes I've got a bit of time for Mr Cleverly. He's not had a great week, A lot, week, of, a lot of people in Westminster say he's not accurately named. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's not that clever. And he certainly uh, didn't do too well on the Rwanda scheme uh, this week. Unbelievable. He went, mm. on, he went on to uh, uh, Sky News, I believe it was, and uh, started saying that the Rwanda scheme was working well as a deterrent. Right. Uh, I think we've got some we form have. of Let's him saying look. that now. Let's have a look. And we know it's already having an element of deterrent, even before it's fully know. up and running, because we interview people when they arrive, when they... Uh, um, uh, put forward applications for asylum, and they tell us that other people that they that were planning to come to the UK have chosen not to because of the deterrent effect of Rwanda, and that's before it's that's even apocryphal. fully up and running. It's not apocryphal. It is the interviews. It is what people tell us when we interview them. I love that, but <laughs> it, uh, it's a deterrent because uh, <laughs> even though it's not fully up and running, yeah. James, it doesn't <laughs> exist. Right. Therefore, it is not a deterrent. We found out this week that 67% uh, of everybody who applies for asylum in Britain uh, is allowed to stay. That also yeah. is not a deterrent. And uh, you know, the rancid icing on the rancid cake is this ludicrous Rwanda scheme that uh, somehow or other the Home Secretary yeah. thinks is working. What I know. Idiot. It's like me saying I've started a rock band, but it's not fully up and running yet. <laughs> yeah. you know? I and don't it, have a guitar. When it is, yeah, <laughs> when it is fully up and running, uh, it'll be a great band, you know. But but this is the thing, you know. Um, who do they interview? When do they interview them? And at what pace what is that going on? Interviews. I mean, surely we're supposed to be getting people into that. We're not getting them into it. So when they arrive, saying, "Where are you from? Have you got a passport? Have you got a visa? No, next flight out." Yeah. And instead, it's like, "Do you want a cup of tea and a shortbread?" Yeah. And have you heard about yeah. our Rwanda policy? Yeah. What about <laughs> the friends and family? Yeah. Like, this, <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah. this is their big. Po also, their considering <laughs> that they've come here already, yeah. they haven't been put off from. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this is By their. The way, this is our government. Uh, these amazing <laughs> deterrents. Yeah. A, a, a Rwanda scheme that doesn't exist. And if you come here, you've got a 67% chance yeah. of stay. These are not deterrents. These are enticements, right. you utter fools. It's, it's, it's also the week, Steve, that they gave away a load of um, what you might call permissions to remain to a load of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, well, they called that clearing the backlog. Yeah. Mm. I mean, technically, I guess it clears a backlog. Oh, wait, it was part of a backlog as right. well. It was the backlog the that legend. was true. Yeah, the legend backlog. There's another the backlog. Legacy. 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 There's, uh, Legacy. There's a backlog the waiting behind. Backlog. A backlog legend waiting behind backlog. the first le backlog. <laughs> um, and this is also the week when he was saying, like, we've had such a great Christmas. No one made it across the channel at Christmas right. because of our deterrent, probably the Rwanda policy. It would have been. Ignoring the weather that was so bad you couldn't get across the channel on a train. No, exactly. Yeah. So You couldn't even get through Kent on a train. Yeah, I mean, I mean trying yeah. to take credit for what the weather does is like when, when the missus wants me to clean the car. Yeah. And it rains. Yes. Like, I'll chalk that one up. Yeah. One of mine. Don't have to do it. Absolutely oh, not. But well, I think I think uh, there's another element he was to in the cleverly story. Else. He was in trouble because he went to a, some bash uh, in Westminster before Christmas, right. and uh, there were journalists there, and he was chatting to some journalists, and he made a joke about his wife and women, you know, because it was spiking drinks yes. was very much on the agenda, and he he made a joke after a couple of glasses of wine, I'd suggest, saying, "Oh, you know." A little bit of a row hit, or just a little bit for the wife. That's not illegal, <laughs> Every night. right? Uh, you know, I, you know, that's a party. Yeah. It's an off-colour joke. <coughs> uh, and if you want me to nominate cleverly for plank of the week for that, I'm not going to do it. No. I'm definitely on the Rwanda scheme. But on I this, the person that I would nominate right. for plank of the week is the person who told tales on yes. this. I just want to say, sneak. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Making jokes about Rahipnol is totally tasteless. Just like the hypno. Yes, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at tasteless joke. Well, let's have a look at how he uh, justified. <laughs> You know, she has always been incredibly supportive of me. She's also very honest. In she must have been very cross in terms, of her, in terms of her feedback. But she also knows. <laughs> what did but she, she say? Also, I'm not going to go into detail. But she also knows. Was she cross? Oh, Kate Burley, so, Burley then. She must have been cross. Yeah. I mean, well, Kate Burley not, even. She probably laughed. Kate Burley isn't even offended by it. I yeah. tell you who I thought was very po-faced was Yvette Cooper 
who came out. <laughs> oh, on, that's unusual and for was her. Incredibly po faced about it, saying how awful yeah. that he could ever make a joke yeah, about something so serious when it comes to you know women's safety. It's, it's definitely off colour, but you know, we've got to be able to about something yeah. serious. If you joke about something funny, the joke's already been yeah. made. We should ask right? the comedian, really. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, if he thinks the Rwanda scheme's working, he's tasting his own supply. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone in that relationship's on uh, Rehypnol, it's him. Uh, yeah. You know, and there's, there's this theory, and I agree with it, unless somebody is offended by a joke, it's unlikely to be funny. I mean, I suppose it would be uh, unfair or uh, possibly off colour to suggest maybe you should give a hypnol to all the migrants coming in, and by the time they wake up tomorrow, they're back in Rwanda. <laughs> Job done. Then you can't serve hey? them for half an hour, yeah. which is what they're saying. Well, that's true, yeah. Instead of putting them into a four star hotel, yeah. give them a load of. Just go here, hotel. have a couple yeah, of. See you again with that. A couple of glasses of this, and you'll be right. <laughs> And when you wake up, you'll be back where We're you came from. We're going to be in trouble over this. This is very yeah, tasteless. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> very tasteless. My apologies. Uh, coming up next, though, uh, we've got loads more to do. Um, another one coming from Alex. Uh, another one coming from Steve. Uh, and it might be involving the United Nations. This is Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham. More after this. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're more than halfway through, and of course, we've still got lots more to do. Uh, we can go straight now to Alex Phillips, um, who's got another parliamentarian, I Westminster do. style. One that I've always really liked, mm. actually. So it sort of burns a little bit to have to roast him. It doesn't really. Uh, Sir Lindsay <laughs> Hoyle, man of the people, oh. that lovely rolling northern yeah. lilt. As I've never liked him. That so. lovely rolling northern lilt. I don't think so. Right. It sounds like sort of Coronation Street on steroids. Oh, this one, honestly, yeah. knows that the weather report isn't only about London. Yeah, I know. But, um, it anyway, he, does, like, he, doesn't, he doesn't, does not London. like regionality. Right, calm down, one. you two. I mean, you've got um, hours to do this during the week. So <laughs> just get do, on with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, anyway, um, so uh, to Lindsay Hoyle, man of the people, yes. that lovely working class voice ringing out and calling to task all of the bums on the front benches. Yeah. Well, he spent 125 grand going on jollies in one year. Now, John Burko, who we knew yes. was a twit, um, I don't mind spent. Burko, actually. I, honestly, really? I don't mind Burko, because Burko's gone, <clears throat> and also Burko, when he was in office, might have been a twit, but he's actually not a twit, because I've met him, and he's not a bad guy. Lindsay Hall, on the other hand, pretends not to be a twit, and is one. Look at the face on her. Yeah. Burko. Anyway, so Burko spent quarter of a million over 10 years going yeah. here and there and everywhere. Right. Now, Lindsay Hoyles managed to spend half that in just one year. Four days jollies to Australia. This is no way he needs to be What's he going there for? Yeah, but the money. Do you think he's paying for that himself? Can I just, sorry to be the guy that does this, but if I just remember about 10 minutes ago, someone was sat here saying, wasn't it great travelling when other people are paying for it? <laughs> yes. Uh, you get champagne. Yeah. 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 Oh, hold on, Very well hold pointed on. Out. Back yeah. in your hip pocket. Yeah. it's different <laughs> yeah. when it's How much did you spend travelling to Brussels and back? It's different when it's in your money. Hypocrisy right here. So well, what was know, he going to? Hang on, what was he, he going to? Having a nice time. What was he going to do in these places? I don't these MP, know. these MPs go on these trips all the time, all around the world, don't they? Fact finding yeah. trips. I think we're paying for a lot of it. Well, uh, we are. But it's a sure big old jolly for most of them. I mean, of all of all the people, his job is to sit in one seat. You don't need to travel. You don't need to go anywhere. Everybody well, comes to you. First right? class seat, as it happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So has this been revealed by some kind of uh, accounts committee? This has been revealed out, by some it? kinds of accounts committee. There and you I'm go. very upset about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And have they chastised him? The, the, the press are chastising but him, as we are have now. the accounts committee? I don't know. Hmm. And did he collect any souvenirs while he was abroad? And could I, we not have them all back? I think he sent a few postcards, but we're still waiting on their delivery after mm. the rush over Christmas. <laughs> well, you'll be pleased to know that we've got a little bit of a clip of Lindsay Hoyle doing his thing, uh, as he does in the House of Commons. <laughs> I say to the honourable gentleman, Commissioner, I will not tolerate such behaviour. If you want to go out, go out now, but if you stand again, I will order you out. Make your mind up. Either shut up and get out. Dear. And the trouble is, he does this a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. He says, you you'll be having your tea if you don't listen yeah, yeah. to what I'm saying. Uh, and he threatens yeah. people all the time. You won't really remain in this chamber yeah. if you carry on like that. Maybe he went to shout at the Australian cricket team. Well, I mean, I wish he would stop shouting generally because he keeps threatening people. But he looked very angry. He did look angry on that particular mm. occasion, yeah. He looks like he needs uh, uh, one of the uh, wiper things from a blackboard. Just yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say yeah. he looks like he needs to go visit James Cleverly. <laughs> <laughs> or he needs oh, a, a someone else can oh. control. 
can't do that. <laughs> anal beads. Is that what it is? Speaker, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You can't That's get them on the way. I never thought anal beads would come back up. There we are. All right, Steve. So many anal Over beads. to you, Steve. For the UN, because look, in the past, I may have been critical of the R Rwanda scheme. In the past, the UN have been critical of the yes. Rwanda scheme. Out of the two of us, guess which one has been sending people to Rwanda? Uh, the UN. The UN. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, I would have been in sure big you hot water. Anyone there? I've double checked my emails, and I mean, they they were saying that the refoulement, which is the phrase used for when you send someone back to a place where they're not able to No, 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 it you're seems like it's Scandinavian accent. Refoulement. Refoulement. Yeah, no, Either way, it seems like it should have been in the anal bead story. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's why the guy got yeah. thrown out of the hotel. But um, they said, oh, no, the, the big problem, the reason why our plan would be illegal is because of the high chance of refoulement. Right. How is it different to the chance it's of not. when they send people no, over there? but I've been saying this for months, sent. right? Yeah. The Norwegians have sent people there, the Israelis have sent people there, the Libyans have sent people there, and even the UN have sent people there. But now the UN say we can't send people maybe, there. Maybe that's what Lindsay Hoyle was going to do. He sits there in Australia for them, who have a very good uh, illegal migration yes. policy, and sat there for four days, and as they pass over, get out! Right, get out. Get out. And they don't leave. You know, Afghanistan sent they, their girls there right. so that they can get educated and not be in danger. Really? Yes. Yeah. I mean, lots of people seem to be sending lots of people to Rwanda. It should be really yeah. powerful. Why is it being only safer than Afghan Afghanistan is quite a low bar. It is quite a low saying. bar. Is it safe? Well, Especially if you're a girl. I'll yeah. tell you, I'll tell you if they ever no, Parts of London are more dangerous than Kabul, True. to be honest. That's for damn sure. I'll tell you what I lose a lot of sleep over, and I will if the Rwanda scheme ever does yeah. get off the ground, which of course it won't, yeah. uh, is that we send migrants uh, to Rwanda, and I'll be lying there tossing and turning up. But what happens if they refer them? Yeah. Well, they send them to their home country. I oh, I know. I don't give a toss. Right. But the system that's been suggested <laughs> is that if, if, if when in Rwanda they commit a crime, if, if someone gets sent to Rwanda, commits a crime, they get sent back to the UK. We've, we've created a system yeah, where we filter out just to get the criminal. Yeah. How do we have to take people back who have committed a crime in their own country? How does that work? We're just so nice. Well, there is that. Softest you know. touch on It doesn't the make any sense, though. No, I mean, it's like somebody's drawn up a contract and gone, yeah, I'll put this in, they'll just sign it. It yeah, uh, yeah. doesn't matter what it says. <laughs> they'll just go, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, so can we have another 100 million? Yeah, there you go. There's another 100 million. Um, and if they do anything terrible in Rwanda, we'll have them back. But I know, let's pass a law to say it's a nice place. Yes, because that's, that's the way just, to do that it. That's the most ridiculous that's thing the way ever. To do it. You've got 650 MPs in Parliament, most of whom could not point to Rwanda on a map, who are asked to vote that it is safe. How do you know? Yeah. But also, just by voting that it's safe, it doesn't make it exactly. safe. Well, exactly, that's my point. I mean, what, what else are we going to do? Sort of Mogadishu next, yeah. or Somalia? Yeah. You should do all London. Yeah. Yeah. You can really sort yeah. out all the crime in London yeah. if you just yeah. vote Hearn it Hill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Iran's a very fantastic place. So all vote for that? Yeah, that absolutely. Is really bizarre. Well, is... We are in a world of feelings now. If I say it, I feel it, then it is. Well, that, but I think that was more uh, a device by Rishi to get his ludicrous scream, sc scheme off the ground. And, but doesn't uh, it we, also I... show that this is why we're so useless at getting anything done? Yeah. Because anybody who has got a brain in their head could make this work. The UN have made it work. You know, the Libyans, the Norwegians, all the Afghanistan, they've all made it work. We can't make it work somehow because... We can't convince anybody of anything. Because I don't understand. We, we are we hoisted by the left hards, aren't we? Yeah. My turn favorite. the stop, stop, <laughs> let's turn the boats around in the middle of the channel and leave the European Convention on Human Rights and start flying migrants out to Rwanda tomorrow. Uh, Rishi could do that, and if you think he's committed to stopping the boats, he could do that and stop the boats. But guess what? He won't do that because he's a globalist. Right. My favorite twist of irony is we were like, I know, I've got an idea. Let's send people to another country to process. And Italy went. Oh, mm. good idea. Let's also yeah. do that. So while we've been umming and ahhing, they've done it. I'm going to use Albania. Yeah. And so what happens is all their illegal migrants go to Albania and we get all the Albanians. Yes. It's just like a washing machine. Right. But then we get told that all the Albanians have been sent back. And as I said to a politician the other week, not if uh, you watch the National Albania Day celebrations in Westminster. Ooh. We haven't sent them all back. There's about 5,000 of them parading around in these very highly expensive cars waving Albanian flags, uh, all living here. Providing yeah. a very uh, crucial service to the people of Britain, uh, cocaine supply at the end, <laughs> yeah. end of a phone and call. And robbing off footballers. They're like the yeah, Robin Yeah, they're Hoods fantastic. I know. Robbing footballers is. and selling coke. Absolutely extraordinary stuff. <laughs> I mean, any, any, any further kind of ludicrous aspect to this will only happen, of course, when Keir Starmer gets in, because he hasn't told us what he's going to do with Rwanda yet, has he? Well, but he has said that uh, he's going to do a deal with the EU whereby uh, we have to take our quota 
of uh, migrants. So we'll have to take more. Which will make the current illegal migrant crisis look like a walk in the park. <laughs> <It's ridiculous. laughs> I thought Starmer had said that he will cancel it even if it's working. Yeah, yeah well, that's right, he did say he's that. He's on yeah. safe ground there, then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Keir, there'll be nothing to cancel. No, there will be nothing to cancel. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable, but, you know... This is something that I suppose we will be talking about for the entire year. I mean, I did come back from yeah. New Year break thinking, will we be talking about different things? You know, will no, we be facing optimistic. new challenges? Nah. Uh, will we be looking at different issues, different people? We're not, are we? No. It's all the same. We're stuck, we're stuck in a kind of a, a rut uh, yeah. uh, because our uh, politicians don't seem to be capable of anything. I don't even think they can organise an election this year. <laughs> I, mean, I think they'll actually struggle to do that. Oh, no, it's OK, though, because the um, Lib Dems are going to bring a motion in Parliament next week to force them to have an election. Are they? Mm. Oh, good. Because I'm uh, glad you said the Lib Dems because we don't hear from them very often. Yeah. Coming up next, we're actually going to have a Lib Dem nominee for Plank of the Week, which we haven't had for a very long time. Back after this. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It's the first one of the year, and I'm delighted to say that it's gone rather well. We've got some really good nominations, and there's been an awful lot going on, basically, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to now nominate somebody um, who we haven't done for quite a long time. And, in fact, until this week, I thought, maybe he's not even an MP anymore. And it's Tim Farron. Do you remember oh, Tim no. Farron, the Lib Dem? Leader, um, former leader. Who used to be the leader. Oh, um, he's the sort of God-botherer one, isn't he? He's no, the one that's no, got difficulties kindly. explaining his views on certain sexual practices. Yeah. I don't know what he'd make of the anal bead story. Um, <laughs> he wouldn't like it. He wouldn't no. like it. He wouldn't like it. He's not a big fan like that of, sort of, thing. Uh, of anything other than what you might call um, heterosexuality, I think, yeah. would be the best way to put it. Um, but he got himself in a bit of a, a mix-up this week because he decided he'd become a bit of a critic of comedy. Ricky Gervais has got his new uh, <laughs> Netflix um, uh, act out. He put this tweet out, watched a bit of the Ricky Gervais thing, really poor. I'm now watching the late, great Norm Macdonald instead. He was able to say the unsayable with warmth, wit and originality. A reminder that it's possible to poke fun at PC culture and be clever and funny. So I think he's probably the only person in the entire world who doesn't think that, uh, in particular, this Armageddon piece from Ricky Gervais, but Ricky Gervais in general, is actually funny. I mean, Steve, I'll start with you. I mean, I'm sure it's permissible not to like Ricky Gervais's comedy, yeah. but, I mean, I've watched Armageddon. It's pretty funny, yeah. isn't well, it? He's a funny on, guy, yeah. you know. On the circuit, there is, uh, there's a weird feeling about Ricky Gervais because every, every other comedian had to spend, like, eight years going around the, the rooms above pubs yeah. being shouted at by drunks, and because of The Office, Ricky yeah. didn't have to do that. Just went into doing uh, tours. Yeah. So there's kind of a there's a resentment. So comedians don't <laughs> like Ricky Gervais. Yeah. There's a and lot that doesn't like include Tim Ferriss. Well, is that because he's funny? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, success. <laughs> but no, success, no, present no, comedy it's, it's accepted. Successful. But most comedians aren't funny. Even That's I can admit, as a comedian, as soon as another comedian becomes successful, part of the circuit is like, no, oh, they're not yeah, any good they're, anymore. They're, 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 they are. It's yeah. no laughing matter, <laughs> right? There is an anti woke kind of thing about Ricky Gervais that he's now perceived in Armageddon to be anti woke because I saw. Some other comedian having a go at Ricky Gervais yeah. because he's picking on the trans community for the last time he did it, you know. Yeah, the well, same I, thing happens with Dave Chappelle as yeah. well, though. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. anything, it raises the profile of these specials that people might not even sit around and watch unless it gets in all the newspapers because of one joke is apparently right. offensive and they make a couple more million. But he, does, he works from the premise, which is absolutely right, that you don't have the right to not be offended. Right. You have the right to walk away, yes. to not watch yes. it, but you don't have the right to not so be offended. Six a million not people offended. watched it over Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Him and million. Dave Chappelle, the biggest uh, things online over, yeah. uh, and on telly over Christmas. And of course, this is with, where all the wokey said, Chappelle and Gervais are evil and they're anti trans, you know. Yeah, and millions and millions yeah. of people tuned into both guys because they're funny and because they appreciate the fact they've got the guts right. to have a go at the trans community. I was pretty proud. And in the last, his last sort of one man special, I can't remember what it was called, wasn't it? I'm trying to think. I'm gonna, I can't remember. Very, but yeah, was being it? Human, being human, something I think like something that. like that. And he made that great, um, very what I thought was very funny um, observation. Where he said, you know, I'm a bit old fashioned. I like old fashioned women. <laughs> you know, the kind that don't have penises. And you know, it's yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. And, uh, but apparently, there are some more woke comedians who have taken exception to this. And have yeah, said, but they're the not funny comedians. No, they're not funny at all. 
And when he's, you know, and I've watched a, a clip of him, one of the guys who, who uh, is it McCaster or something like that, who had a go at Ricky Gervais and just was like, you know, oh, yeah, he's picking on these really, really yeah, unkind. easy, unkind targets, like the trans, because nobody else has a go at the trans movement. It's just ridiculous. It's but let's have a look at Ricky Gervais's okay. clip and see what uh, we think of it. I've been doing a lot of video messages recently for terminally ill children. You know the charity Make-A-Wish Foundation? They're great, and they give these dying kids their, like, one wish. And if it's me, I always say yes, and I always start the video the same way. I go, why didn't you wish to get better? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, right? Ed editing it out before the laugh is really cruel. Cos yeah. that does sound like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's but, what we can, but I found it funny the second time I watched it, you know. But, but I think for Tim Farron to suddenly reinvent himself as a comedy critic, it's kind of laughable, isn't it? Well, I, I think this special isn't as funny as previous Ricky Gervais specials, but you're right, no one needs to get the voice of Tim Farron in this. No one goes, I, you know what, I wonder what a former... Yeah, I wonder what Tim Farron in. thinks of this, you know? I mean, his second tweet was, I make no comment about it being coarse, because, of course, he wouldn't oh, like that either, gosh. but it wasn't funny. In the same way, now, this includes you, because you've written the MASH report, in the same way that the MASH report wasn't funny. So now he's having a go at you. Oh, really? Uh, people well, in, I changed my mind. People emitting <laughs> predictable opinions to people who aren't challenged by them because they already agree is cringe-making. Popular, sure, but unchallenging stuff always is. But isn't that what we do? We go to the stuff that we like. Yeah. What's well, wrong with that? But he's, I mean, he's tweeted that, which means he's in an environment that famously is an echo chamber. So all he would have done, whoever agrees with that, would have read him saying it. Right. So it's we did have a clip of Tim Farron meeting a Leave voter, but I'm sorry we haven't got time to do it. Can we not do it? Oh, come I've on, Tim. I've never said come that. Come on, you've always said they didn't know. It wasn't on the ballot paper. Well, leave the thing if all it, these... it was in the piece of paper, in the booklet that was sent through by the, the government. Ballot, not on the ballot paper. Yeah, but we all had it. You, if, we, if you had your way, the ballot you paper would be about my whole lawn. He doesn't have the way with words, does he, old no. Tim? If there's that one clip. thing politicians can't stand, it's near-life experiences yes. like that. With they have to stick. They have to stick in Westminster because if they come outside of the bubble, they have to integrate with yes. normal Real people. people. And person. they just can't do it. No. It looked a bit like that was Tim Farron from the future who'd come back to warn him <laughs> about his stance on Brexit. <laughs> exactly right. But, I mean, Tim Farron, thankfully, just as... Uh, useless as he's always been. Um, keep out of comedy, Mr Farron. Probably keep out of politics as well. Uh, but there we are. Um, I've got 30 seconds to choose and I think I was almost going to give it to ITV. The NHS could get it. I don't want to give it to the chess. Chinese chess chair, but I can't because it's just too weird. It's too weird. <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to give it, I'm afraid, to Steve Khan. Yes! First one of the, of the year. He missed out on Plank of the Year. He gets Plank of the Week for the first one. Uh, we'll be back, of course, next week with more of the same. Thank you to Renee. Thank you to Thank Kevin. You. Thank you to Alex, and thank you to Steve. Uh, we'll see you next week for another edition of Plank of the Week. It's the world's number one interview show, the new global home of big debates and big questions. This is really unfair. Why? We'll explain why. For all the big names. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. You're going, to, you're going to resign? Yeah, of course, I cannot continue my work. Did you feel Elvis was a controlling influence on you? And the good news? You've already found it. All new Piers Morgan Uncensored, right here, Monday to Thursday, 8pm.